Hello, apologies for the long gap in not posting any videos. Uh, hopefully I'll get back to doing them more regularly as of now. Um, what we're going to look at now is a breakdown of effects of all the techniques that can be used in poetry and in media text and just generally through writing. Now this will be useful at all levels from year nine all the way up to A level because it explains exactly why a technique may well be used. And that's really important because all the marks for picking out a technique come from explaining why they use just to say you can see a simile doesn't get you any mark uh, the exam is not marked on say what you see you have to actually start to explain why it's being used so here we'll be looking at some of the um, techniques and some of the effects that you can actually talk about now uh, I don't want to take credit for this by the way this was uh, found I found it in an old 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 book in a school uh, that I used to teach at so credit to the person who put this together I will just be reading bits of it to you hopefully explain some of it so here we have the technique here we have the effect and again we'll just look down them so why do people use puns in wordplay well sometimes it can uh, provide humor or suspense and also it'll invite you to question their expectations so when you see a word you might think of something and then when you actually read the article it might give you something else so it's actually pointing something out for you you um, depending on the way the pun is used um, the use of senses obviously anytime you see that in writing it's just to give you the sense of being there and to give you a chance to reflect on the content and to convey a sensory experience which means you're actually feeling it through the senses uh, rather than just from reading words on a page um, you're actually being put in the situation uh, the pattern of three is always built to be the rhythm so when you say um, he was tall smart handsome uh, for example or she was um, annoying frustrating and old whatever it is obviously there's a rhythm being built there it also can add excitement and it draws the attention of the reader in fact that phrase there draws the attention of the reader is something that you can just use again and again and again all the time it's a really good one to to um, reference um, repetition well repetition allows the reader to compare and contrast and also allows progression so you can actually have something being drilled in or to be able to um, really highlight something or to again here like draw a parallel if it's been um, if it's kind of different attitudes being shown at different times then you can show what's consistent by using repetition of the same word now with similes, similes obviously um, make a real clear picture for the reader, they help them to understand and they can be used for a surprise you know um, sometimes like an exaggeration especially when um, people are trying to do something funny you might see a simile used because sorry a simile used because someone is uh, a lot of jokes are actually based on uh, the expectation of one thing and then turning around and seeing another and the exaggeration that comes with that so that's quite good and obviously in um, when we're romanticizing something we generally try and put it in the kind of best light possible that's why um, eyes get compared to emeralds etc 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 and also you can pass along different people's perspectives so for example like what something might, like an elephant might seem as big as a bus to a child etc um, uh, depending on how big the person looking at it is um, alliteration uh, uh, syllabus etc this is all used to convey certain sounds and effects so you know like uh, the s sound repeated might give the indication of something splashing or you know if you hear a lot of um, kind of really um, hard consonant rhyme uh, going through something uh, sorry a hard consonant beginnings of words then it might give you the kind of the feel of uh, the tone of a poem so um, if you said uh, uh, destiny destroyed something you know you're just getting this idea this repetition of D is really giving you this strong feeling of something bad happening destiny destroying um, resulting in death something like this um, onomatopoeia it kind of can give a lot of speed or excitement because like words like splash rush well they're really quite fast words so they can actually give you a lot of um, pace in whatever it is you're reading the consonants and assonants depend that's obviously when the internal uh, parts of the word uh, can make something smooth and make it very I like the word smooth actually it creates something very um, uncomfortable or comfortable depending on how it wants to be how long you want to carry that rhyme for or carry that vowel sound for sorry should I say um, and it can be used to underline something especially when you've got a, a like heavy repetition I mean a lot of songs do this so you can pick out um, a lot of examples from songs patterns and imagery etc that are kind of repeated again it's to emphasize and to convey a message and remember that's what you're looking for in a lot of higher um, aspects of literature you're really looking for all the symbolism and uh, the imagery that's coming through you don't really want to you know just say oh because he says this that's the end result you really want to look at what the so obviously for like say in um, 
in uh, in Gatsby. The green light in Gatsby means so many different things, even though people are just kind of looking out at it. You're not just going to say, well, he just looked at the green light. The whole point is to kind of pick up, well, what does it mean to different characters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, enjoyment. Enjoyment is really good to uh, allow you to continue from one line to the next. So you can kind of continue in the same vein or the same feel, or the same thought. Um, it also might allow you to increase the pace and prolong the atmosphere. Single word sentences, these are really, really great because they're normally very powerful and I'd recommend to use them in your own writing. You know, if you just said, um, oh, here, so a single word sentence just with word, the word alone, it can just represent so much in terms of the ideas and the person, everything. The one hand, uh, sorry, the one word uh, kind of gives you a very shorthand effect as well. So it's just kind of very sparse and it makes you really think about something. So um, there's a real suddenness to whatever is being written or said. And uh, maybe because you're only offering one word, you're forcing the reader to interpret the ideas for themselves. So they've really got to go away and think about it and really kind of push their own understandings or something on there. So again, I just remind you all these really good examples. When you talk about it, you say, OK, the writer uses a single word sentence to create a sense of sadness, to force the reader to. Um, the the uh, writer uses the imagery of uh, light to emphasize the OK, or to convey the. That's how you want to use it in your writing. And again, I, I sincerely recommend that you practice as much as you can. Um, one line verse uh, in contrast to longer verses. OK, that's specifically for poetry. Poetry, but I mean, you could kind of take it to the idea of paragraphs as well. And it's just the idea of maybe summing up or making something small and dramatic. Um, a conversational tone, if you kind of go there, is uh, obviously like, yeah, say, with a Mice and Men, you've really got a, a really strong kind of immediacy to everything that's going on. I mean, the book only happens over a few days. And a lot of that is based on the fact that they speak uh, speak to each other because, you know, it's kind of gives us a very real we're in there. Something important's going to happen at the time, etc. And sometimes it can be unsettling because you can hear from different people's tones and gives you different perspectives. So uh, whereas a writer would normally kind of write in a way that was lit uh, had, a, had a literary sense to it, it or a book that you'd be studying anyway, it would have a literal sense to it. So it would be quite prosaic, quite beautifully written. But then when you have a conversation, it kind of cracks it out a little. It makes <laughs> that's a really bad phrasing. Um, it makes it actually kind of come away from the very serious and the rigid and the beautifully written. It kind of comes into a bit more of a, of a draw and we can get a feel for the people like, I mean, Crooks in Of Mice and Men is a really good example of that. Um, and then like with cliches and etc things that we use like this we you know we've got um uh, you can you can make something become ir irritating or it can show you direct you to a feeling towards a certain character etc and um, obviously that's the kind of thing that you're actually you want to pick out so don't just pick out that they do it please pick out what it is exactly that they are doing when they do it if that makes sense um yeah good to make a video again